Today I'm upgrading my cooling system for my spindle. I'll be going from this to this bad boy. Y'all stick around. I'm going to show you how I do it. So before I install this new chiller, I want to show you how my current system worked. This is my coolant bucket. This is the power to the pond pump that's inside there. It's plugged into my Festool CT15 dust extractor. And the Festool CT15 is plugged in back of the black box in there in the vacuum port. So whenever the Festool comes on, it energizes this outlet which went to that pump. So my plan is to do it the same way. I'm going to plug the chiller into that outlet on my Festool. And before I decided to do it this way, I did check and see what the uh, amperage load limit was for this outlet. And right here it says, do not exceed 2 amps. Well, if you look on back of the chiller, it is 0.4 to 0.9 amps. So I think I should be okay. So the first thing I need to do is unhook this. And this has been in place for 13 months because that's how old my machine is. So let me unhook it from the pump in there. Let that water drain out a little bit. Pull these hoses out. I don't know if you can see that, but there's kind of a yellowy, oily look right here on the end of this thing. And I've been noticing on my, uh, on the spindle end of the water line, it also has that yellowy, oily look, but you know, just for a few inches, and then the rest of it is uh, clear just like it should be. So I don't know what that's all about. This hose is still draining. I think that's about it. All right, so we can just take this whole shooting match out. And remove it. I'm going to give you a quick 360 view of this thing. This is the front, power switch, digital display. I know it shows the water temperature, but I'm not sure what else, but we'll find out soon enough. Here on the top, that cap is where you put the water or the coolant in there. And it's long-winded, but yeah. On the back, this is your inlets and outlets for your water line alarm output there is a pimp pond cnc has a alarm cable that will plug in right there and then it runs into your mass though so it can uh, trip an alarm if for some reason this thing quits working or if the water gets too hot uh, it'll let you know on the mass display so that's pretty cool course there's your 110 outlet I showed you a close-up of that earlier in the video and there's your drain if you ever need to drain it so I'm going to open this thing up and let's see what it looks like on the inside all right let's take the lid off this thing All right. Now, first thing you'll notice is there are no refrigerant lines. There's no refrigerant in this thing. It's referred to as a chiller, but actually it's more of a cooler. It works just like the radiator in your vehicle. So, no refrigerant, but here's your cooling lines. Got the pump thing in. No 
up here, better view. Of course, this is the back. And we're fixing to put some water in this thing and then get it put over there and set it in place. All right. Oh, you see the water level right there. Cool. So, I think what I'm going to do, that's enough to run it, fill all these lines, and then I'll top it off then. So, I am going to put it back together, move it over there where it needs to be, and run it. All right, first we need to install these short hoses that hold this adapter down from, I'm guessing, 3 8 inch ID to a quarter inch ID. I could be wrong about that, but anyway, this is a reducer because these coming out of here are pretty good size. I'm guessing 3 8 So I'll pick up uh, some more hose clamps. Next time I go to the store for this end, probably won't need them, but anyway, better safe than sorry. All right, let's get this thing moved over there in place. Perfect fit. All right, now we got to hook up the water lines. Yeah, this is a three eighths inch hose. Uh oh, that didn't work. All right, I'm gonna show you what the trouble is that I'm having here. I'm using super thin ether, one quarter inch ID, three eighth inch OD. But I measured this in, and it is exactly a quarter of an inch. Well, the inside diameter of this hose is a quarter of an inch. So the problem is, I mean, it just fits so loose it can't possibly work. So anyway, that's why I'm struggling uh, in this part of the video. But I figure out a temporary fix. Stay tuned. I'm just going to plug it in the wall back here for now just to see it circulate some water. There it goes. Yep, it's leaking. Yeah, let me turn it off. Yep. I gotta get different adapters, that is for sure. All right, I've got a new plan here with a uh, temporary fix until I can find a permanent solution, but I just wrapped it with some Teflon tape to make it uh, fit tighter in that super thin tubing, and I'm gonna see if that stops the leak. All right, I've got both hoses, the coupler, Wrap with Teflon tape on the quarter inch side. I'm just going to plug it in and see if I have any leaks. And now it's running. So far, so good. It's 
puts out quite a bit of air too. Still purging all the air out of the line right now. Yep, not a drop. Get you on in here. You see it purging that air out. There it goes. Just clear it up. Just about it. Cool. No leaks. Well, all right. I guess I'm back in business. Hopefully, I can come up with a better solution than this. But, uh, you know, for an emergency fix, I think this will be fine. I'll just keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't start leaking. All right, I'm going to go ahead and top this thing off. Find out how much water it takes so I can let y'all find folks know. This, um, this is the second gallon. All right, let's see if I can fill it in there yet. Nope. Gallon number three. I know it ain't gonna take all of this one, so I'm gonna go kind of slow here. Damn, it's holding more than I thought it was going to. See where I'm at. Oh yeah, it's right there, right there at the top. So we're gonna call that good. Maybe. Just a second, I'll show you how much of that third gallon I used. Ooh. So I ended up using 2.62 gallons. And that's what the display looks like. It says it's 21 degrees devil math units, which is around 70 degrees American units. And that makes sense because it is, hmm, my thermostat showing 71 degrees here in the shop. So that looks to be pretty accurate. All right, I'm ready to test the cooling system, which will be turning on the Festool and seeing if it will make the chiller come on. So all I got to do is hit my coolant flood. That turns on the Festool, which should in turn turn on the chiller. Killer's running. Festool looks good. Great water flow there. I'm going to call that a success. Alright, the only thing left to do is install this chiller alarm cable and we'll be ready to rock and roll. So let's get that done. All right, first I'm going to introduce y'all to a relatively new product from Pone CNC. This is an inlet panel that mounts to the back of the Masso and has 24 openings, 12 along each side for uh, different inlets. And I heard it from a very reliable source that over the next several months, Pone CNC is going to be coming out with several new cool things upgrades and uh, you will need extra inlets in order to use them more than likely just depending on how yours is set up but i have one inlet left right here but uh, i'm going to go ahead and use the panel to install this inlet wiring harness So let me get that going here. I've already punched my hole. Right That's what here. she said. <laughs> First thing I got to do though is run these wires through here. Put the washer and the nut on.
All right. Now they, it says that this yellow wire will not be needed, so I'm just going to leave it here in this panel. I'll wrap it up or something later. And then you just run it through this opening here. All right, I've got the wire pulled into the inside. So now I'm just going to put the panel back on here, the cover on him. And the uh, mount, Masso mount, just screws in right here. You've got these standoffs in here to screw this, the cover onto the base here. And four of these, these four right here, also hold that mount. I'll hook up all those wires down there later. So we're ready to get inside this joker. There's the two wires I just run in here for the chiller alarm. All right, so I've routed my wires up through here as neat as I can. Starting to get a little crowded in here. But what we got to do is put the red wire to a power. I have one available right here. The black wire goes to any input except for number nine. So I've got one over here, number 17 that I'm going to go with. Alright, get my power over here. Right there. So now we need to close it up and boot up the Masso, and then we'll get that configured in here on the F1 screen and we'll be good to go. All right, we're in the Masso F1 setup screen. The input that I used was input 17, so I'll double tap that. And then I'm just going to scroll down until we find the spindle coolant flow alarm right there. Tap that, hit select, and that's it. We've got it configured and ready to work with the Masso. Now all we have to do is connect the alarm cable from the back of the chiller to the Masso. So let's do that right now. Connector. All right, and for me, I'm just going to throw it up under my Craig bench here and pull it through to the front, from the front. So let's go up there. And here's our inlet that we installed earlier. So now let's crank this thing up and test the alarm. All right, let's test this joker. I've got a file loaded up here. I'm just going to do an air carve here just to test the, the uh, alarm function. So all I got to do is start that carve. So rewind, cycle start. As soon as it gets up to speed, there it comes on the back. And I have water flow. So now all I have to do is just disconnect one of the coolant lines on top of the spindle, and that should trip the alarm. So let's see how long that process takes. Oh, it's beeping. I think it's supposed to shut it down too after a, a few seconds. 
let's just see what it does. Yep, it turned it off. I've got a alarm spindle coolant. Excellent. So just like every other alarm, the way you clear that out is to cycle your e-stop and home. And that is that. No way. Yes way. Look. Yay. <laughs> Here's one interesting note I wanted to share with y'all. Uh, I had to put a splitter, plug that into the Festool. And then that black line coming out of that, that's to the chiller. The white one is to this fan over here because this chiller does not draw enough amperage to keep that vacuum on. It'll come on, you know, when I hit cycle start, it'll run for a few seconds and then it'll shut off. But the, the chiller will keep running, but it won't keep the Festool running because it's not drawing enough amperage. So I got, I'm that fan was just a test i'm gonna plug up something maybe a light bulb or something back here to keep it going but anyway i just thought i'd mention that in case any of y'all are trying to set up with a best tool dust extractor be expecting that little issue but that's no biggie at all that's it for this one kids that wasn't too bad of a project and i like the idea of that cooler a lot better than the bucket with the uh aquarium pump in it plus now i have an alarm that lets me know if you know i have a coolant issue so it's a win-win folks and uh i want to thank daniel at pone cnc for sending me that uh cooler unit uh that was very gracious of him and uh i hope i did him well with this video uh and i will say i've said it before i'll say it again those are the nicest folks you'll ever do business with. And I mean, I'm serious about that. You can't beat the customer service at Pone CNC. All of those people will just bend over backwards to help you. Uh, so give them a chance. If you haven't already tried them, there's links below. I have an affiliate link with them. Uh, that will be in the description below. Y'all check that out. If you need anything from them, use that link. And I think you'll get... Five or seven percent off, I can't remember, but anyway, you'll get a little bit of a discount and I'll get a little kickback too. So, another win win. What can I say? So, thank y'all. Uh, this is my current subscriber count. Super happy with how this thing is going. Thank y'all so much. Be sure and share if you haven't already. Like this uh, video and give me a comment below. You got any questions, comments, concerns? Uh, Post them down below. I always reply to the comments. So I guess that's it for this one. I will see you on the next video.